A film a prize winning Zimbabwe novelist and filmmaker arrested at recent protests accused President Emasi Mnagagwa's government on Tuesday of holding its people in a repressive chokehold as they endured an economic emergency. Zimbabwe novelist Sisi Dangaremba, whose latest book, This Moneyable Body, has been nominated for a Booker Prize, um, was he she has been nominated, the book has been nominated, and she was bundled into a police truck while holding placards on Friday and charged with breaking the COVID-19 lockdown to hold an illegal gathering. Billed pending trial after uniting jail, the 61-year-old said she could not keep quiet while neglect and mismanagement left Zimbabweans unable to afford a decent meal and health care. That will be it from the rest of Africa now to the foreign scenes where Lebanon is in mourning after a huge explosion in the capital Beirut killed at least 78 people and injured more than 4,000 others on Tuesday. The whole city was shaken by the blast which began with a fire at the port which exploded into a mushroom cloud. President Michael said 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate had been stored on safely in a warehouse for six years. He scheduled an urgent cabinet meeting for Wednesday and said a two-week state of emergency should be declared. The country will observe an official period of mourning for three days from Wednesday. And the president also announced that the government would release 100 billion lira of emergency funds, which is about $66 million. Joining us live now is Lames Hortate, who is a British and Lebanese citizen. Good to have you. Thank you very much for having me. And sorry about the explosion yesterday in your home country. I mean, as shocking as the news of the explosion has been, it would seem that the trauma experienced by citizens of Lebanon has been coming in waves. Please tell us what you can of your country's uh, travails leading, leading up to you know, what happened even yesterday. Well, um, I mean, we've always had uh, troubles and turbulences politically and uh, uh, you know, wars and all that, but uh, the last year seems to have been a disastrous one. Um, I mean, natural disasters apart, we've had our own disasters who've been in power for about 30 years now. And uh, it seems that their decisions have gotten worse and worse as time uh, went by. And this year, it's, you know, we've had the revolution, they didn't really listen to the people, and then they carried on with what they've done uh, making it worse, and the economy went worse, we have mass immigration, and then we had corona, and really a lot of people are only in the country because they were stuck because of corona, and then you've got this, and to find out that it's because of mass um, irresponsibility and carelessness of mm -hmm. people who should have dealt with something, it, it shouldn't have gone to this, really, and yeah. to kill that many people. I mean, we've heard of 78 people dying, but I know that the, the waves were, were heard and destroyed homes miles away. So I know as time passes and it unfolds more, we're going to have a lot more deaths and a lot more people hurt. So um, yeah. it's uh, depressing. It feels a bit like watching a, a child with terminal cancer and you can do nothing about it, but watch it die slowly and horribly. Hmm. So... Let me say, I, I, I can only imagine how personal, you know, this is and the way you have put it there is quite strong. Watching a child, you know, or someone with cancer and dying. I mean, we heard that it was triggered by fireworks, you know, being stored near the port. I'm wondering if you do have other information that, you know, could shed more light on what could be termed as a devastatingly, really destructive explosion from yesterday. Well, there, there's, uh, to be honest with you, the government is so dysfunctional that I'm, I'm not sure they will know the real reason or they will tell us the real reason. Uh, but they said, said fireworks, but then they said it was uh, things that were uh, taken from uh, hands that could have caused a problem with them years ago and then stored badly instead of actually being dealt with. Uh, so citric nitrate and gases and explosive and all that. So we've heard so many stories Mm -hmm. And none of them is actually, you know, um, excusable because it should have been dealt with properly. Right. Uh, so it's just a responsibility really from, from these people. And, you know, they, they should just 
they shouldn't even have a meeting. They should just leave us alone and go because they don't know how to deal with it. Oh, I'm so, so sorry, Lamis. Uh, this is all that we can take, and uh, I can hear it from your voice how personal this is. We can only say, please do stay safe and keep strong out there, and we hope uh, for the better and more responsible leadership at all times. Do keep safe, Lamis, and thank you for your time. Oh, thank you very much for giving me the time.